Today we have this absolute beast of an integral that's actually inspired by Ahmed's integral, which is exactly the same monstrous integrand, but the upper limit being 1 rather than infinity. And it turns out our target integral has a pretty cool solution development using Feynman's tricks, so that's exactly how we're going to solve it. We'll start by defining the integral function i of some parameter alpha as the integral from 0 to infinity of inverse tangent alpha times square root x squared plus 2 divided by x squared plus 1 times square root x squared plus 2 dx. Now looking at the integral function, the first thing we notice is that i of 0 is 0 because in the numerator of the integrand we have the inverse tangent of 0 which is of course a big fat 0 so the whole thing just crashes down. And the target integral i is the integral function evaluated at alpha equal to 1. Okay, cool. That information will come in handy later. And we now plan to differentiate the integral function with respect to the parameter alpha. And we can switch up the order of the integration and differentiation operators because we know that the integral function converges. We know this because we have the inverse tangent function, which is a bounded function. And this bounded function is being multiplied by the reciprocal of x squared plus 1 times square root x squared plus 2 which is a decreasing function. So we have bounded function times decreasing function and the integral converges by Dirichlet's theorem. You can also visualize how this thing will converge by looking at the graph of the function. Okay, so we have the derivative of i with respect to alpha equal to the integral from zero to infinity of now the partial derivative with respect to alpha because of the Leibniz rule of inverse tangent alpha times x squared plus two divided by x squared plus 1 times square root x squared plus 2 integration with respect to x. So we're differentiating partially with respect to alpha. That means the function's purely of x. That is 1 by x squared plus 1 times square root x squared plus 2. These are treated as constants. And we have to differentiate the inverse tangent function, giving me 1 by 1 plus the square of the argument, which is in this case alpha squared times x squared plus 2. And because of the chain rule, I also have the derivative of the argument with respect to alpha. That is square root x squared plus 2. And we have some nice cancellation taking place. So we're interested now in the integral from 0 to infinity of dx by x squared plus 1 times 1 plus alpha squared times x squared, terribly sorry about that, x squared plus 2. Once again, Feynman's trick is successful in transforming the integral into a much easier one. And all we need here is now a partial fraction decomposition. So let me write this as the integral from 0 to infinity of, what do we have here? x squared plus 1, and then we have 1 plus alpha squared times x squared plus 2. So what exactly do we need here in terms of the numerators? Well, if you have a 1 here, then that means we'd get, we should have an alpha squared term over here. That will cancel out the alpha squared x squared terms. But what do we now need to balance things out? We'll be left with 1 plus alpha squared times x squared plus 2 minus alpha, uh, alpha squared x squared, yes, exactly, minus alpha squared. So yeah, these two go out, and we have 2 alpha squared minus alpha squared. Yeah, to balance everything, everything out, we just need a 1 by 1 plus alpha squared term. And that's our partial fraction decomposition. Now we have two very simple integrals to evaluate. One is the integral from 0 to infinity of dx by 1 plus alpha squared minus 1 by 1 plus alpha squared. Rather, we have alpha squared divided by that thing, integral zero, uh, 0 to infinity of dx divided by... Now, what exactly should I express this as? I can expand by 1 by alpha squared and get rid of this thing. That means I have x squared plus 2 plus 1 plus alpha squared. Rather, this should be written in this manner. So you have the x squared term and then the constant term. Okay, so the first integral here can be evaluated quite easily using residues. And 
that will sort out to pi by two minus one by one plus alpha squared. Similar approach here would give us what exactly reciprocal of this thing in the square root. Yeah, in the, in the denominator, we have two alpha squared plus one and then an alpha term over here. Inverse tangent of x times alpha divided by root two alpha squared plus one limits are zero and infinity. So that means we would have pi by two again. Okay, so we have pi by two times one by one plus alpha squared minus pi by two times one by one plus alpha squared times alpha divided by root two alpha squared plus one. So we finally have the integral functions derivative completely in terms of the parameter alpha. And we now have to recover the integral function by integrating with respect to alpha. And let's use a definite integral from zero to one because I know that I of one is what I need and I of zero is zero. So the left-hand side of the equation by the fundamental theorem of calculus is I minus zero, that's just I. And we have pi by two times this integral, which is the inverse tangent of alpha with the limits being zero and one. So that's just pi by four. So you have pi by four times pi by two, which is pi squared by eight. And we have to now evaluate the integral from zero to one of alpha divided by one plus alpha squared times square root two alpha squared plus one. And I'm just gonna write this thing in a different manner. I'm gonna write this as twice of one plus alpha squared minus one. Yeah, that's exactly what it sorts out to. And now I can introduce a substitution. In this case, I'm gonna let alpha squared plus one equal to u, which implies that two alpha d alpha equals du. So I might as well introduce an extra factor of two here. So I have pi squared by eight minus pi by four times the integral from where to where. As alpha approaches zero, we have zero plus one, which is one. And the upper limit in this case is one plus one, which is two. And then we have two alpha d alpha is now your differential element du. And we're dividing this thing by alpha squared plus one, which is u. And then we have two u minus one. Okay, cool. And how do we evaluate this thing now? How about we invoke another substitution that is letting two u minus one equal t squared. And this will imply that two times du equals two t dt. Okay, or just du equals t times dt. Sounds good. And this means that we have i equal to pi squared by eight minus pi by four. And I'm pretty sure there would be a single substitution that would do everything I did in two substitutions. Anyway, who cares? The solution development so far has been pretty cool. And that's what we're here for, right? So we have the integral from where to where exactly? As u approaches one, we have two minus one square rooting that gives me a one. And then we have two times two is four minus one three square root. So we have root three. Du transforms to t times dt. Then we have u here, which is t squared plus one divided by two. Okay. Then we have root two u minus one, which is just t. So again, we have some cancellation taking place. We can expand by two, giving me pi squared by eight minus pi by four times what exactly integral one to root three of dt divided by one plus t squared. Wait, expanding by two gives me pi by two, right? Yeah, exactly, pi by two. So we have pi squared by eight minus pi by two times, again, inverse tangent structure here, inverse tangent of t with the limits being one and root three. So we have pi squared by eight 
minus pi by 2 times what exactly? Inverse tangent of root 3 is pi by 3. Right, I really hope I did not mess anything up. So performing the arithmetic would give me here pi by 12, correct? So I have pi by 12 here, meaning I have pi squared by 8 minus pi squared by 24. Okay, what is that thing? I can factor out pi squared by 8. That means I have 1 minus a third, which is 2 thirds. So pi squared by 8 times 2 thirds. Okay, I'm left with pi squared by 12. That's the integral from 0 to infinity of the inverse tangent of root x squared plus 2 divided by x squared plus 2 and the square root again times x squared plus 1. And wait a second, the integrand here is an even function of x. So that means if I use the interval of integration that is the entire real line, then I just have to double the result on the right-hand side. So I have this result that our monster integral evaluates quite nicely to zeta 2, which is really nice. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.